All right, today we're talking about the rules of exponents. The homework you're going to be doing today will be page 207, 1 through 74 all, 79 through 86 all. Um, it sounds like a lot of problems, but it really should only take you about 15 minutes. Um, the, we're covering three different concepts, so you should be working on three different things when you're working on the homework tonight. All right. Okay, so... When we're talking about our rules of exponents, this really means x times x times x. And what we see here, here is the exponent, okay? The 3 is what we call an exponent, and the x is what we call our base. That's going to be important that you understand that language, because when you have issues later, you should be writing notes, when you have issues later, I'm going to ask you, what is the base of that exponent? I'm going to ask you that question over and over. Okay? Now, what it means is, when you see that exponent, we multiply the base by itself that many times, the exponent amount of times. So, our rule for common bases is, when I have x to the a power times x to the b power, really, all we have to do is multiply the base, the exponents, if we have a common base. Now, this only works if the bases are the same, right? I'm sorry, we add the exponents when we're multiplying with common bases. We add the exponents when we're multiplying with common bases. So, for instance, when I have n to the third, this really means n times n times n. And when I have n squared, this really means n times n. So when you add them up, we end up having n to the fifth. So our shortcut here is really, if we have a common base, we add the exponents. If we have a common base and they're being multiplied, we add the exponents. Okay? Questions? All right, so let's practice it a bit. Okay? Um, why don't you guys try 1, 2, and 3 right now? Actually, why don't you try them all? You want to do the first one together? Or you want to? Yeah, let's do the first one together. Okay. Sorry. Okay. 2 squared times 2 to the third makes 2 to the what power? 2 to the fifth power. Now, if it's reasonably small, we accept, expect you to simplify it. Okay. 2 to the fifth power is what? 2 times 2 is, times 2 is, times 2 is, times 2 is, 32. So that's reasonable. If you're getting like 4 to the 6th power, I don't expect you to multiply that out. You can use a calculator. Okay? But when you're getting like even 2 to the 6th power, 2 to the 7th power, you should be able to do that mentally. If you're doing 3 to the 4th power, that's pretty easy to do mentally. Okay? Only when they're small like that. All right, I want you to try two and three. Go. How's the recording? All right, number two, Fionn. Um, what do we do? Well, when you, there's an exponent for the second three, and it's one, so Good. when you add the two exponent and the one exponent, it's the three exponents, so three to the third power. Right. It's three to the second, and if you don't see the one, if you see the number three, then we know it at least has one as its exponent. We don't write the ones, but we know it's there. Okay? It's not zero. Zero would make it disappear. So three squared times three to the first is what? Three to the third power. And when we simp can we simplify that? 3 to the third, 3 times 3 is? Nine. And 9 times 3 is? 27. Perfect, so it's 27. Okay? Now, here's where things become very sneaky. Okay? What is this one? What does this simplify to? Yes? Negative 2 in parentheses. Negative 2 in parentheses to the, to the 6 power. First of all, notice... Right here, that negative is in the parentheses. So right now, what I want, to, want you to focus on is that this parentheses 
is the base of that exponent. That means that negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 gets repeated. But if this were written like this, negative 2 to the fourth power, that means this, negative 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Only the 2 is the base of that exponent. So it's whatever is touching that exponent. In this case, on number 3, the parenthesis is touching the exponent, so the entire parenthesis is repeated. It's part of the exponent. The exponent goes for the, paren the entire parenthesis, the negative and the two. But in the, up, the one up here, where it says negative two to the fourth without the parenthesis, only the two is the base of that exponent. Is that clear? Okay, so there we go. Um, and then that multiplies to what? We said 2 to the 5th is 32. What's 2 to the 6th? 64. 64. Good. All right. You want to try the next three on your own? Go. All right. So number 4. Number 4. Walk me through it, Chloe. Chloe. Right, so we really add the exponents, good. And don't worry about multiplying it, I'll do that for you. Or you let a calculator do that because it becomes 16,384. Okay, next one, fraction. Who wants to attempt that one? Jamie, go. Um, so one half to the power of two divided by two squared. Yep. And then that means 1 is to the 5th and 2 is to the 5th. So I got uh, 1 over 32. Perfect. It's reasonable. Okay. Um, next one. Someone I haven't heard from, Max. I got uh, 2 to the 5th times 3 to the 5th. Perfect. He noticed that the bases are not the same. Remember, we can't just add 2 plus 3 plus 4. Because 3 is a different base. The rule only goes for common bases. So 2 to the 5th and 3 to the 4th. And 2 to the 5th is what? 32. 32. And 3 to the 4th is? 81. And so I will multiply it out for you. And that is 2,592. Questions? All right. So, um, why don't, okay, you guys do, let, let's jump to number three, and we'll do number three together. So, now we're adding something different. Does anybody know what's different here? What's different about this one than the last one? I know you see something. Are you not noticing? Casey. Base Maddie. The base is multiplied by a number. OK. And that number, does anybody know what that number is called? Coefficient. It's a coefficient. Good. This has a coefficient. Actually, they both have coefficients. The other one's just not written. What is the coefficient of the other one? One. One. And so I'm going to use the commutative property. So this is equal to, I'm going to use the commutative property. What the commutative property says is numbers can travel. And I'm going to kind of group them the way that they should be grouped. I mean, with like terms, right? Well, with their... So 3 is a coefficient, and I'm going to multiply it by 1, the coefficient. And m squared is uh, a base with, a, with an exponent. And m to the fifth is another common base with an exponent. So 3 times 1 is 3, and m is to the seventh power. Okay, questions? All right, I'd like you to put the recording on pause and do one through six, the rest of the remaining ones. Go. All right, so now we are going to, let's go through the next. Oh, yeah, so let's check number one. What did you guys get? X seven. Number two? Okay, who can quietly raise their hand and tell me how we do number four? What do we get for number four? Elise? Seven. 
It's okay. Seven. 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 Well, I put M. <laughs> Whatever. Seven, at, seven x to the eighth power. Perfect. I just need to put M down. So okay, next one. Nicole? I didn't Oops. Understand. What? I didn't understand. Okay, well, well I, do you understand what a coefficient is? Yeah. Okay, so what's the coefficient of x? The first, second x? One. One. Okay. I'm going to show you one more time. Here. I did three times one. Oh, I thought you were talking about number five. No, I understand number five. Okay, so what was number four? Number four, I got 7x to the power of 8. Good. x to the 8th power. Okay, so why, why is this one hard? Let's put a's with a's. A's with a's. What would that be? a to the what? 5 to the power of 5. Good. And n is to the power of? Oh, 9. Good. Next one, go. Nicole. Go, next one. I got um, negative 3a to the power of 9. Perfect. Okay. You could do more than you thought. Okay. Okay. So as I mentioned before, if we have coefficients, we're going to multiply coefficients with coefficients, like base with like base. So we'd multiply 2 times 5 and x to the 3rd times x to the 4th because those are like bases, and then we get 10x to the 7th. Okay, questions? All right, I want you to practice with the next four. Pause the recording and go. Let's go. Let's start with Mike. What would you get for number one? Good. Next one, number two, uh, Grant. I got negative 12a to the 8th power. Perfect. Noah? Um, for number three, I got negative 18x to the 3rd power and y to the 8th power. Good. How'd you do, Nicole, on that one? I just, like, added them all together. The okay. Which one did you add together? <laughs> I got negative no. X is a common base. X is with X's. Y with Y's. How did you get to... Oh, I see, because you just... Okay, first of all, you're not seeing... Let, let, let's go back. You're not seeing... Um, you're not seeing this. You're not seeing that this is an exponent of 1. That's the first thing. And secondly, you're not, you're combining unlike bases. The rule is only for like bases. So if I'm doing this, okay, let me do it so that I'm going to, it's 9. I'm going to put like things together. 9 times negative 2. Let's go x squared times x. x to the what? Good. Y to the third times y to the fifth. So now I get negative 18. Write this down. Times x to the third times y to the eighth. Okay? So coefficients. Go, Nicole. What would the coefficients multiply to? Number four. The coefficients. These are coefficients. Okay, so what do they multiply to? One, they multiply to one. Look at eight times three is twenty-four. Negative three times four is negative twelve. What do the coefficients one is just a it's a b so it doesn't matter. They're straight multiplication. Thirty. Okay, tell me what the A's end up being. A to the what? A to the power of 2 and A to the power of 1. Which is? A to the power of 3. Good. What do the B's multiply to? B to the power of 6. Good. And what do the C's multiply? C to the power of 3. Perfect. Okay. All right, next. We are... Um, I'm going to skip this, and if we have time at the end, we'll come back to it. But if we don't need it for tonight, and it will come back to us. Okay, power of 
um, power of properties when we are dividing. If when we multiply, we add our exponents. When we divide, we multiply. Okay? Now, in pre-algebra, we kind of taught you like this. First thing we did was we taught you x to the fifth really means expanding it out x times x times x times x times x over x squared x times x. And then anything over itself really it, um, equals 1, right? So there's a 1 and a 1. This cancels to a 1 and a 1. And so what am I left with? x to the third times 1 times 1, which would be x to the third all over 1. I don't need to write over 1. Are you seeing up here, up here, up here, up here? So I can erase it. Okay, we don't really need to write over 1. When it's over 1, we just leave it alone. Okay, I don't want to see you guys writing the over 1. Then in 7th grade, we also teach you that instead we're just really, we're subtracting, right? x to the fifth, since I end up with x to the third, the, the quick rule is to just subtract it. x to the fifth, the top minus the bottom exponent. Okay, so that's one way to look at it, and we get x to the third. So if you're writing that down, it would be x to the, x to the top minus the bottom exponent. Does that make sense? But now that we're in algebra, we're going to be going through these really quickly. And so this is how I kind of want you to start doing them. I'm going to rewrite this, and I want you to kind of write what I'm writing. 10m to the fourth. I don't really need to write it that big. Let's go. 10m to the fourth over 15m. Okay, now... This is like having two different problems. And we're going to reduce both. Okay? What's the greatest common factor I can divide out of 10 and 15? 5. So when I divide by 5, what's left? 2. When I divide by 5, what's left? 3. What's the greatest amount of m's I can divide out of the numerator and the denominator? It has to be the same amount. No, I cannot take 4 out of the denominator. What is the greatest amount I can take out of both, divide out of top and bottom? 1. I can take 1 because the bottom only has 1. So that's the greatest amount that they both also include. So I can take 1 out of here. M divided by M is what? 1. And when I divide 1M out of M to the 4th, what am I left with? m to the third. And then we multiply straight across. The numerator is 2 times m to the third is 2m to the third, and the denominator is 3. All right, I'd like you to pause the recording and do the next one. When doing this, make sure you write the problem as well as the answer. I want to see the slashing and dashing. I should be able to see the numbers behind it. Okay, pause the recording. All right, let's check our work. So I've got 3x to the fifth. You're going to see I did. So that's the slow way we did in pre-algebra. And like I said, this is how I want you. I don't even want you doing it that way. I don't want you to do that. Never mind. Let's get this off. This. So the next one, we said um, we could divide what factors out? I can divide a. Th I can't divide three and eighteen. What can? What factor? By three. Good. And three, I'm left with one. And here, I'm left with a six. What else can I divide out? Yeah, common factor. Um, you can subtract two. No, what factor can I divide out? Oh, two. Oh, wait. X to the what? Oh, oh, x to the second power. Good. And when I divide x to the second power by x to the second power, what am I left with? One. And when I divide x to the fifth by x to the second, what am I left with? X to the third. Good. And so I multiply across, I get x to the third over six. You guys with me? This is how we do it in algebra. We're not going to be writing the subtraction signs and expanding it out. Okay.
I'm going to skip this. All right, we're almost out of time, so I think we're going to have to. Here's what I'd like you to do. Um, pause the recording and work on these six problems. Now check your work. Remember, I want to see you slashing and dashing, not cross-canceling. It goes once, it goes x to the fourth. So it equals x to the fourth. It goes once, it goes y to the eighth, so it's y to the eighth. Two goes once, three times. It goes once, it goes m to the seventh, so it's three m to the seventh. You guys understand how we're doing this? I'm going to take one out, one a here. I'm left with a to the fourth. I'm going to take two b's out here. I'm left with b squared, so it's a to the fourth. Oh, what happened here? should have written 1 uh, b squared. And here we're going to take 6 m's out. I'm left with 1. And here I'm left with m to the 4th. Do you see how fast it goes? Yep. So it's m to the 4th, m to the 3rd. And even this one, 6 goes into 6 once, into 24 four times. I can take this out once, and I'm left with k to the 3rd. And these, I'm left with 1, so it's 4K to the third. All right, I had to go through that very quickly. So we could go hit negative exponents. Oh, my God. Okay, a negative exponent is not a negative number. What it really is, it implies that it is a fractional amount. It's an inverse. Okay, so let's look at, so here's what we do. When we have, I'm going to just do a separate one right up here. Let's say I have x to the negative third power. Here's what you do. Since this is really x over 1, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why they say it's an inverse. I'm going to drop the base down and make it positive. And if there's nothing in the denominator, what do I put? 1, because really what's in that denominator is that 1. Do you understand? Yeah. So we just reciprocate it. Now, if it happened to have a denominator, we just take the reciprocal and we make the exponents positive. Okay? Um, so let's look at number one. What would it be? Remember, a negative exponent is not a negative number. It's a fractional amount or an inverse. So I'm going to create my fraction. And what would it be? What, what goes down into the denominator? Three to what power? One. And one goes up top. We don't see that one, but it's there. So that really equals one over three. You guys with me? Okay, we're going to finish this. We can do it very quickly. Number two, what do I do not? Okay, number two, what am I doing? Go. What does it become? Good, which is one fifth. Okay, next one. Max. Uh, which equals, which simplifies to one over 16. Next one. Nicole. It's one over six to the power of two, which is one over 36. Good. Now we have a, a fraction. What would it be? Elise, five over, five over four, and we make the, ex the exponent to the first power, five to the first over four to the first really equals five over four, like she said. So what would the next one be? Yep. Three over two to the second. Right. Or we can just do right away, three over two. Everything is to the second power, the positive power. And that makes nine over four. You got it? Okay, and that's the video.